Scordatura is the fancy name for it, also known as cross tuning or open tuning. It involves changing the relationship between the four strings of the fiddle, so you no longer have G, D, A, E, but some other combination. Until very recently I avoided it like the plague for all sorts of reasons. It upsets the instrument, which likes stability and doesn't take kindly to such unnatural practices. Gut or synthetic strings wear out more quickly if often tuned up and down, and there's always a chance of breaking a string if you go up more than about a tone. Many fiddlers prefer to use a second, often cheaper fiddle for use in retuning. Cross tuning breaks the links between the three elements of violin playing, the written music, the finger patterns you use on the fingerboard, and the pitch produced from your fingers. Furthermore, it greatly limits what you can play, making rapid key changes impossible. Most retunings limit the player to a single key. My thoughts on the matter were summed up by the Scots-Victorian fiddler James Scott Skinner. Never want to sit on the fence on such matters, he stated in his Guide to Bowing, all this sort of thing is pitiful and makes the judicious grieve. The violin was never intended for such mutilation. An old idea was to tune the G and D strings to A and D and play reels, etc. No artist would dissent to such devices for the sake of mere applause. The province of art is to elevate and enliven, but surely never to tend to degeneracy. So what exactly is the point of cross-tuning? In classical music or jazz it's usually not a good idea, since key changes are common either within a piece or between pieces, and the subtleties of tone which can be gained are easily lost in the context of an orchestral or band setting. That's not to say that cross-tuning never occurs in classical music. Scordatura is said to have been introduced to polite society by the virtuosic German violinist and composer Thomas Balzar around 1660. The mystery sonatas were composed by Heinrich Bieber around 1676. A fascinating and profoundly religious work, the 15 short sonatas describe the 15 mysteries of the rosary, each one using a different tuning, creating tonal colours, tension and dissonance. Scordatura was not uncommon in Baroque music, used by composers such as Bach and Vivaldi, and it was particularly associated with the viola d'amore. It still occurs occasionally in more recent compositions, but it does so usually in small ensembles or solo works. However, there are some styles of traditional music for which cross-tuning is essential if you are to achieve an authentic sound. Before the days of amplification, the fiddle had to work hard, and open-string drones were one way of increasing volume. With a fiddle tuned to G, D, A, E, no matter what key you're playing in, your opportunity to drone on an open string is limited. In the key of A, for example, the open G string is of little use as a drone. However, if you tune the G up to A, it's far more useful. Not only can you now bow it at the same time as fingering melody notes on the D string, it will also ring on its own when not being bowed or fingered, adding further volume and resonance to the fiddle. <laughs> When played in open tuning, the violin becomes more alive and responsive, almost developing a life of its own. Tunes can achieve a mesmeric quality, allowing endless repetition or variation of a simple theme. Little wonder that Norwegian folklore abounds with tales of fiddlers being possessed while playing. Norway has one of the traditions that has delved most deeply into the possibilities of cross-tuning. Scandinavian fiddling has for centuries been closely tied up with myths and legends of devils, trolls and water spirits, and many of the tunings used are imbued with almost magical properties. The Hardanger fiddle was developed around 1650 with four or five non-fingered sympathetic strings which lie underneath the fingerboard. The upper strings can be in any of 26 or more possible tunings, with the lower ones tuned to ring freely in whatever key or mode is being used. To complicate matters further, the actual pitch of an individual instrument may vary by over a tone up or down. For example, the most common Hardanger tuning, accounting for around 80% of all tunes, is ADAE, variously known as Opstilt, Vanlegstille or Hogbass, and I apologise to all Norwegians for my terrible pronunciation. However, since fiddlers traditionally play solo, a player may tune the whole fiddle up or down to suit his particular instrument. One outcome of this is that if you listen to a tune where a fiddler claims to be playing in A-D-A-E, what you may actually hear may be B-E-B-F-sharp. Among the many other tunings used are A-D-F-sharp E, called Huldra tuning, after beautiful women who lure unwary males into the underworld, never to return. Such is the hypnotic nature of this tuning that players can go into a trance and may have to have the fiddle dragged from their hands after hours of playing. Alternatively, the devil himself may show up at the dance, grab the fiddle and play until the guests are dead from exhaustion. Perhaps the most famous Norwegian tune in A-E-A-C-sharp 
is Farnie Tullen, known as the Devil's Tune. DDAE, or Laus Bass, loose bass, is well named as the G string is tuned a whole octave below the D. AEAE -A -E is half trollstilt, half troll tuning. When it comes down to it, better to deal with half a troll than a whole troll. In old time jam sessions, fiddlers are happy to stay in a single key and a single tuning for up to an hour. At some point, a key change will be suggested and everyone will retune. If an outsider sees fit to criticise this practice, fiddlers will usually blame it on banjo players, who apparently find it harder to retune. Banjo players, of course, blame the fiddlers. Bluegrass players, who pride themselves on their ability to play in any key, of course refuse to retune at all and sneer at the lot of them. Tunings in old-time music are often named after the best-known tunes with which they are associated. AEA C-sharp, which for Norwegians is the devil's tuning, becomes calico tuning, after the tune Marcus Martin's Calico. It's also known as Black Mountain Rag, or Drunken Hiccups tuning. GDAD, used for playing tunes in G, is also called Flatwoods, after the tune of that name. GDGD is sometimes called sawmill tuning. Listen to the Carolina Chocolate Drops for some excellent tunes in this tuning. Along with AEAE, -A -E, this is a symmetrical tuning. Assuming the melody can be played on the upper two strings, it can be echoed using the same fingering an octave down on the lower strings. AEAD -A -D is often called Old Sledge. DDAD, -D, with its very low bottom D drone, is called D-Dad or Dead Man's Tuning. Among the tunes associated with this are Boniparts Retreat, Dry and Dusty, and Midnight on the Water. One of the commonest and simplest, since it just involves raising the G string by a tone, is ADAE. This is used for many D tunes such as Liberty, Soldier's Joy, Mississippi Sawyer, and Arkansas Traveller. Eck Robertson made his famous 1922 recording of Sally Goodin in this tuning. In FCGD, the whole fiddle is tuned a tone flat. This means the fingering is as normal, but the whole thing sounds a tone down. In America, this is called Cajun tuning, and its purpose is to make it easier to play with a C diatonic accordion, which is the key instrument in Cajun music. Celtic music is not often thought of as the province of open tuning, but it does happen sometimes. The chief vehicle for Irish traditional music the world over today is the session, in which the common practice is to change both tune and key with great regularity. As such, the practice of cross-tuning is certainly a rarity. However, that's not to say it doesn't happen at all. The Fox Hunter's Reel is a tune often played in AEAE, -A -E, for example by Sean Keane. The Donegal fiddler John Doherty was also well known for his very convincing bagpipe imitations, using the tuning AAAE -A -A -E to create drones. Other fiddlers occasionally using cross-tuning include James Kelly, Maeve Donnelly and Quivine O'Reilly. Another practice fairly common in Irish fiddling is tuning high or low. This is not strictly scordatura since the relationship between the four strings remains the same. It is, however, a useful technique to alter the tone of the fiddle to suit a particular tune. Tuning low has the effect of bringing out a darker, richer, more resonant sound. Karen Ryan, for example, on her album The Coast Road, plays several tunes with the fiddle tuned down a tone. As we saw with Cajun music, for some fiddlers the reason for tuning down is to match other instruments, such as the pipes or accordion. Dennis Murphy and Julia Clifford, famous sleeve lucre players from County Kerry, tuned down to match the model of accordion which was common at the time. Other fiddlers tune up by a semitone or more. This adds brightness, volume and responsiveness to the fiddle. This was particularly important in the dance halls of Ireland before amplification became available but still occurred in more recent years. Donegal fiddler Tommy Peoples often tuned up. You can hear this, for example, on his album The Quiet Glen. Frankie Gavin of Didanon also commonly tunes up a semitone. What about Scottish fiddle music? One of the important differences between Irish and Scottish fiddling is that in the latter, there are many published manuscript collections from the 18th century onwards. This gives conclusive proof that cross-tuning was an important feature of Scottish fiddling from the early days. For example, the Caledonian Pocket Companion from the mid-18th century had tunes in Scordatura, as did Neil Gow's first collection of Strathspey reels. 
Scottish music particularly favours Scordatura because of the connection with bagpipes and the associated drones, and Shetland fiddlers such as Ali Bain or Tom Anderson used cross-tuning to help achieve the characteristic ringing strings sound of Shetland fiddling. AEAE is one of the commonest alternative tunings, ideal for the key of A, which is so often found in Scottish tunes. Grove's Dictionary of Music says, It is frequently employed by Scottish reel players, and in their hands has a singularly rousing effect. The old fooler reel, as played by Tom Anderson, is an excellent example. ADAE is also used for some D-tunes. Again, to draw from the Shetland repertoire, try the Unst Bridal March, a waltz in A, published in Tom Anderson's collection. <coughs> So far we've talked mostly about British, Scandinavian and North American traditions, but cross-tuning is also found further east. The European violin was brought to Egypt during Napoleon's campaigns and to Constantinople by professional Greek and Gypsy musicians. It has been adapted to suit the modal nature of Arab music by an extensive range of retunings. In Iran, for example, ADAD, GDGD, GDAD and EDAE are all common. Playing is often highly ornamented with slides, double stops, wide vibrato, open drones and so on. There is an interesting and unusual tuning widely used in Greek and Turkish violin music called chiftateli, meaning double strings. It is a GG-DD tuning and involves crossing the middle strings both above the nut and below the bridge. To achieve this, the middle strings are first loosened, then without removing either string from the pegs, they are swapped into each other's notch in the nut. The same is done at the bridge end, again without removing the strings, so that the strings swap notches in the bridge. This leaves two X's where the strings cross above the nut and below the bridge. The G string remains on G. The next string is tuned to G an octave higher. The next string again becomes a D, and the top string a D an octave higher. By double stopping the first and second, or third and fourth strings, an octave can be played, giving a distinctly oriental sound. Double stopping the second and third strings gives an unusual harmony of parallel fourths, a very primordial sound on which the Black Sea fiddle music is based. A simple version of this tuning often used in Greek fiddle music is GDEE, -E, allowing melodies to be played in octave unison on the E and A strings. <laughs> In klezmer violin, this is known as Schweistrein, two strings. Klezmer fiddler Cookie Siegelstein uses GDGD and AEA C sharp. She has a special notch in her bridge to play ADEE. -E. The A string is lowered to E, then placed in the notch right next to the E string, so that the two E's can be played in unison octaves while playing over a D drone. So what have we learnt? Scott Skinner may have considered it degenerate and a pitiful mutilation, but cross-tuning is an essential element of so many fiddle traditions across the continents and the centuries that it cannot be ignored, no matter how difficult or confusing it may be at first attempt. <laughs>